This past year was perhaps remarkable for two big changes in India's politics. And I know the politicians all sitting here this evening will know what I mean. One, we saw the emergence of the angry Indian. Like never before, you had people, especially urbanites, who had traditionally been not very engaged with politics, not just displaying their anger, but coming out on the streets. Whether it was the anti-corruption movement started by Anna Hazare, or more recently, the protests we saw after the rape, the gang rape of Delhi's Braveheart. Politicians suddenly had to deal with this new phenomenon of a very angry Indian. The corollary, of course, was that politicians who performed actually, as Pranoy was mentioning, got voted back. The second big change that took place this past year is a change that's been happening gradually but got solidified. The age of the chief minister. The age where power has actually been moving outwards from Delhi to the states. So much so that it is now believed that at least in one of the major political parties, a chief minister could be, could be prime minister. What about the other political party? Those are some of the things we're going to talk about this evening. First, I'd like to call on stage Somebody who's had many challenges this year, but remains one of the Congress's most successful chief ministers, Sheila Dixit, Delhi Chief Minister. May I invite you on stage, ma'am? Ma'am, it's been a tough year. You just heard the parents of the young girl. It's been a year in which you, among all other politicians, have been pressurized to be accountable to your people, not just the ones who vote for you, but even the ones who don't vote for you, the citizens. What has been your biggest learning this year? Well, our uh, biggest learning has been that uh, the media has brought out what perhaps has never been talked about since, I think, the 70, late 70s and early 80s. So that woke us all up, and this tragedy which took place on, in December last year was something which uh, pricked everybody's conscience, that in a city, in a civilized city, the capital of our great nation, something like this could happen and not in the middle of the night, but somewhere about 9 or 10 o'clock. It showed the apathy, both of the police or the incompetence of the police and the apathy of the people around. And I think what... Apathy uh, of the politician as well, do you think, initially? The politician was not available there. But it was the politician who reacted to it, and that is when the Justice Verma committee was formed, fast-track courts were formed, they're trying them out, and I think the outpouring of the people brought out this anguish, this ang angst against every, uh, the situation very, very clearly, but I think it woke us up also, and woke up our conscience also, but I must tell you at the end of it all that it is not just the police or governance alone which can set this right. It's society also which has to awaken to what is going wrong with all of us, especially where our women are concerned. Well, I want to talk politics and the changes we're seeing in just a moment. But since we so often, tonight we are dedicating this to the Indian woman. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think it would be interesting to talk about is what happens to women in politics. And we have you on stage and Sushma ji right here in the audience. And I just wondered if, if Sushma ji, you'd like to say something to Sheila ji. Do you both believe that the women's bill will ever get passed in your lifetime? And if there's something across political differences that you share in common, despite being political opponents as women in politics. We have already supported the bill in Rajya Sabha. If the government brings the bill in Lok Sabha, naturally we will support the bill and get it passed. Ma'am, do you think it will get passed in your lifetime? No, I'll tell you. <laughs> when there is a will, Sushma ji, there is a way. Yes, we, we brought you it. bring the bill, not the will. Will is there, bring the bill. <laughs> I, I'm not so sure. I think basically, and if I may share with this with not only just all of you here, but the entire country who's watching this program, somewhere men are afraid of women. 
and women power. Ma'am, now, would you agree also in your party too? Rajna ji is sitting no, next no, to you. No, let me just finish. <laughs> uh, Barkha ji, ji, we took the step of giving 50% reservation to women in our MCD. BJP rule states did well. it much before than you did. No, no, no. All no, the no. BJP rules it states did it much it before than you did. No, Sushma ji, I don't want to get into an argument of who did what. We did it. You perhaps thought of it, but Can we I did it. Can I ask you a different question before I call the other guests in? Do you feel women in politics are scrutinized in a different way from men in politics? Is a completely different standard applied to them? Uh, in the beginning, yes. But eventually, I think the gender uh, does not remain important. It's the kind of work you do, the kind of delivery you have, and the, ki the way people look at you. I think a time so does come that when gender is not the issue.